Welcome to Smart in the City, the Babel podcast where we bring together top actors in the smart city arena, sparking dialogues and interactions around the stakeholders and themes most prevalent for today's citizens and tomorrow's generations. I am your host, Tamlin Shimizu, and I hope you will enjoy this episode and gain knowledge and connections to accelerate the change for a better urban life. Smart in the City is brought to you by Babel Smart Cities. We enable processes from research and strategy development to co-creation and implementation. To learn more about us, please visit the Babel platform at babel-smartcities.eu. I am live in Barcelona today at the Smart City Expo World Congress on the last final day on Thursday. Um, it's a yearly expo in Congress that is the world's biggest and most influential event on urban innovation. Um, Babo is a collaborating partner this year, and I'm excited to give you unique insight into the event in this edition of the podcast. So with me today, I think um, no better person to speak about the event and everything that it entails is Hugo Valenti. Um, he's the director of the Smart City Expo World Congress in Barcelona. Welcome, Hugo. Hi, thank you very much. Lovely having you with us. I like to just dive right in with and get warmed up with a little teaser question. And that question today is, describe the Smart City Expo World Congress in just three words. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> From my perspective, greatest event ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did greatest event ever. Oh, I like it. I like it. Usually people are like, um, innovative, digital, <laughs> or something along those lines. So, but I, I love that approach as well. I love it. Greatest event ever. I I have to agree that it is one. It, it really is the most influential. Everybody I know is here, um, pretty much in Barcelona. So, um, my schedule has been packed full with meetings and events and podcast episodes. So, um, there's a lot going on. It's hard to keep up. It's really might be overwhelming. Um. But before we dive in more into the event, I want to know a little bit about your background. I like to give the listeners a little intel into who are you, what led you here? All right. So um, uh, I am 47 years old uh, and I've been working for FIDA Barcelona, uh, the, the organizer of the event, since uh, 2005. And, uh, I studied international business, uh, an MBA. And I started working for FIRA. We organized different events. And uh, in 2011, we had this idea of, uh, of creating an event that could help cities become better places to live in. So um, we started that. We started uh, very small, but uh, we were pretty successful. Uh, and uh, and the, the, the most important uh, initiative that we have uh, that we had at the moment was to create something that was truly international with a global scope. Uh, that's not easy to do. Uh, and um, and uh, during this 12 years period, I believe we have succeeded. Absolutely. Um, how many countries do you have here? Is 85 over, plus? No, or no, no, over more? 140. 140. Okay, yeah. getting yeah, yeah, getting up there. <laughs> Very good. Um, so you, you touched on it a bit, but um, I want to speak about what is, you touched on the mission. I don't know if you have anything else to say about the whole mission of the Smart City Expo World Congress mm -hmm. and also how has it evolved over the years? Yeah. So uh, our mission hasn't changed since the beginning. Uh, the, the idea was to really help create a better world by creating better cities. That was the core. Um, it is it is true uh, that the, the concept has evolved quite a, quite a bit. So I remember at the beginning that uh, we talked about smart cities, but uh, we were mostly showcasing ideas and PowerPoints. Um, and also there were plenty of people that, were, that thought that uh, a smart city would be a super technologically driven city, right? Like plenty of sensors, um, internet of things, 4G and at that moment, broadband, uh, that, that, was the, that was the idea. Um, we, we, we always believed that, uh, that uh, a change needed uh, to be made. So um, we, we had plenty of meetings with different cities all over the world. We explained to them the concept, uh, we made them come over uh, you made them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> we asked them to come over. <laughs> You're bribing them to come. Yeah. No. <laughs> not really, not really. Um, and uh, no, what we started to do was to create these meetings between between different cities, the uh, cities themselves, uh, and also, of course, with vendors, but uh, mostly with uh, within cities themselves, to try to understand and learn from each other. 
Uh, and uh, the, what, what happened was that the, from having the technology at the center of the discussion, we started shifting that discussion and having the citizen at the center of the discussion. And uh, I remember in 2014, 2015, there was a huge uh, shift. Of course, on, on any innovation process, whatever innovation process there is, at the beginning, there are like four big steps, right? At the beginning, you need to understand what you're talking about. So in this case, we needed to understand what a smart city was about. Then there is a second uh, plan, which is how to plan. And, and in this case, we have been working very hard during all these years to help cities understanding that they needed to have a comprehensive plan towards uh, giving a better life to its citizens. And then there's uh, step number three, which is to start prototyping and, uh, and applying on the and applying the different solutions and products on the cities. And then it will come step number four, which is yet to come in some places, which is the large scale implementation. I believe right now we are on step number three slash four in the sense that most of the cities have their ideas clear or at least more or less clear. And they're starting to apply different solutions uh, in some cities, of course, this is more advanced and in others less advanced, but, uh, but the whole world is, is, is becoming more aware of, uh, of what uh, smart cities are. Absolutely. It's it's really becoming um really at the forefront of so many, many discussions. And that top and the the title of smart cities has just evolved in general to be a much more holistic approach just from this technology um aspect. So um you're speaking to a lot of cities. Um and uh, with those cities that you're speaking to, what do you think um are they the central challenges that they all share and what do you think they need to kind of accelerate this change to maybe these large scale implementations? The, the, I mean, most of them talk about, uh, for instance, um, financial challenges, but the, but the biggest challenge that there is, is to have a clear idea and, uh, and, uh, and really having a comprehensive and holistic approach. This is the. This is what we always tell them. It's not. It, it's easy to explain that to them, uh, but it's very hard for them to understand that because uh, because as a company or, or institution, there are plenty of different departments. So the mobility department doesn't always talk to the police or <laughs> or to the health department or to the uh, green uh, or or energy department. So uh, a holistic a holistic approach really needs to have everybody on board, and understanding that they're working towards a, a common goal. And, and that's a, and that's a, the biggest issue that really needs to be to be addressed. It is true that during the past 12 years we have seen a huge change on this and and now uh, mayors, uh, governors, uh, etc they, they understand that they, they they need to explain to their teams that they're working together and they, they need to work together. Absolutely. And so what do you think um, is the biggest driver for that change? Well, the biggest driver, perhaps, is that, uh, and, and this is very typical, but it's but it's true. We are living in a huge digital disruption in our world, and we as citizens, uh, we expect much more from the administration in in different areas. Uh, on another end, uh, it is, uh, and it, it depends on on which continent you live, but uh, but we are seeing a huge shift of uh, of population coming to live in cities. Uh, and also the amount of people in the world that we're living is, is increasing. So right now we are 8 billion people. We will be 10 billion people living in the world. Right now we are 55% of us living in cities and we will be 70% of us living in cities. So uh, if we don't do anything, it will be almost unbearable to live <laughs> on our cities. So we, need, we, we, we understand that we need to create new infrastructures and that these infrastructures need to be uh, completely connected, uh, that they need to be sustainable, and that uh, we need to have a, a, a better quality of life. And this is the reason why smart solutions are so needed, because otherwise we will live in a in a very bad situation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so you're around a lot of, I mean, in the expo, I don't know if you have the number of how many exhibitors there are. There's a ton of new um, innovations out there um, in, in the expo. What do you think are some of the, these most notable trends and innovations that you see um, uh, that you've observed? Yeah, yeah. Right now, it's, uh, it's our biggest edition ever. We have 1,000... 
106 exhibitors this year. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. To the happy. two massive halls yeah, 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 too. Exactly. I didn't even realize the first day. I was like, oh, there's another hall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, yeah. Are two, there are two halls right now. Yeah. And, uh, and next year it's going to be bigger, hopefully. So, so wow. no, that's, yeah. um, uh, but for me, the most important thing is that uh, this, these exhibitors are showcasing as I mentioned before, at the beginning, 2011, uh, those exhibitors were mostly showcasing PowerPoints, right? Uh, <laughs> but right now, uh, you are seeing real things and, and real things that are being implemented already on the field with uh, with results and real KPIs. So it's a uh, very cool stuff that can be implemented in any city in the world tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So we're not talking about um, or we're not showcasing just stuff that's going to happen in five or ten years time. We're we are showcasing stuff that really can be applied today. Yeah. Uh, and that's uh, that's very that's very powerful. Uh, there are, well, uh, in relation to trends, there are plenty of them. So mobility is a big issue right now, and uh, mobility for us as as citizens, it's 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 very important because this is something that we we need to move around every day, and we need uh, and we want to do it in a in a in a good manner. So uh, there are plenty of initiatives in relation to public transport and how to and how to improve it. Uh, there are different examples. Of course, electrification is, is one of them, but also autonomous vehicles are another. And, uh, and uh, also different, different tests that are being done around the world of having the public transfer, for instance, free for the, for the citizens of the city. And there to understand, okay, uh, how do they use then the public transport? Do they leave the car at home? Because the, the public transport is, is, is free. <coughs> Excuse me. Different lanes, for instance, to to have uh, to have the public transport have a priority over the over the different vehicles, but also how to mix up the public transport with our personal vehicles like bicycles or like um, uh, well the different the different personal vehicles that 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 we might use. So for me, mobility is a is a very big issue. Uh, of course, uh, energy efficiency is uh, is very high <laughs> and, and top of the list. Uh, there are plenty of solutions, for instance, to, to right now we waste more or less 30 to 50 percent of the water that we use for irrigation. So, so there are very simple things and very inexpensive things as well to apply uh, that could uh, completely reduce this, this waste that we had um, in relation to uh, energy efficiency on buildings, right? Uh, there are plenty of solutions and green solutions that can be applied uh, to our buildings to uh, make sure that during the winter we are we are have more heat and during the summers it is uh, it is uh, the, the, the heat is more bearable in different in different in different parts of the world. So uh, there are plenty there, there are plenty of solutions and of course the, this year we have seen a huge increase in in everything related to artificial intelligence. Uh, I was wondering when you're gonna get to that. So yeah, <laughs> yeah a, I was like, AI is he gonna mention theme. AI? <laughs> that's a theme this year. Yeah. Um, plenty of uh, plenty of things related to AI. Um, mostly mostly um, specifically on on data and data collection and, and making sense of the data. That's uh, that's a very important thing because during all these twelve years we have uh, gathered plenty of data, but it was very difficult to make decisions based on data because. It was very difficult to read it <laughs> and to understand. When you get millions of data, it's 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 very difficult to handle that. AI can help uh, quite a lot on that, and also uh, via AI and, and via different solutions for the metaverse or digital twins. I know those sounds like passwords, but 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 there are um, right now some real implementations of uh, a city having a digital twin. That can be very helpful to understand, okay, so I want to do a change in my city. Before doing that on the real streets, I will try that on my metaverse. And thanks to AI, I can understand how this will really affect the life of the people on the street. And if everything goes smoothly, then I can apply it directly. So, so they can save both a ton of money and a ton of problems to the citizens. This is something that is going to become huge in the in the next few years. Uh, but it's starting now, and I see that uh, it has uh, huge implications. 
Absolutely. Um, yeah, all cities need to be including these into their discussions as well. Um, AI as a governance topic, right? Um, so I don't like to mention it too much on the podcast, but COVID. Um, so the COVID uh, pandemic has had a significant impact on urban areas that we know. Um, and you had the expo before COVID and after COVID, as we like to say, of course, COVID is not gone. But, um, it, you know, after the lockdowns and everything, um, how are cities adapting to the new normal and what innovative strategies have emerged for building more resilient and responsive cities? Yeah, absolutely. Well, COVID was a uh, was very difficult for all of us, and and when you do physical events, uh, you can imagine it was yeah. very difficult for us as well. But uh, from a uh, from the city perspectives, what we have seen, uh, uh, not only from citizen perspective, uh, cities perspective, but also uh, as people for us, we have seen that there's a huge increase on adoption on adoption of uh, digitalization, right? So. Um, Almost everybody understood that uh, that digitalization was an essential part of our lives. Uh, so cities had to adapt, and uh, and uh, some changes that probably would have been done in five years were done in just months, barely months. So uh, right now, most of the cities in the world are completely connected uh, digitally. You can you can um, as a citizen you can uh, discuss. Uh, or, or or have any service um, digitally at the at the palm of your hand, and uh, that was a uh, that was something that I believe was was very good. Uh, COVID also helped, on some senses, to to um, for the digital divide that currently exists in our society. It is true that there are some people that are still left behind. Uh, but most of the people really, it's 90, 90 something percent, you know, at least on, on European countries, for instance, are connected. So, so that is, that is very helpful. Um, and I strongly believe that this is a trend that's, that has come. It will, it would stay here and it has come to, to, to stay basically. Yeah, absolutely. Do you have a specific use case, maybe a story that you've heard from one of the cities that you've worked with, um, around digital transformation? Yes, uh, plenty of them. Uh, it, it really depends on the continents you're talking about. So, for instance, um, when we think about China, which is a, a huge user of, uh, of digitalization, they have plenty of solutions and, and using also artificial intelligence as well. Uh, so they have facial recognition on the streets, um, which from one end gives plenty of more security and, and better security than they had before. So right now it's... But a little bit debated also, uh, absolutely, right? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. That's the other that's the other half of the yeah. equation. Uh, so, so right now, if you go to China or to the Middle East, for instance, it's almost impossible to see uh, a thief on the street or a burglar in the street. They will get caught yes, I mean, in five minutes time. Yeah, absolutely. But on the other hand, it is true, and, and from a and from a European perspective, it is true that privacy, uh, it's um, well, you lose privacy there. Yeah. So so um, at least myself as a Barcelonian and as an European, it's 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 hard for me to to see these type of solutions. But on the other hand, for instance, um, from a European perspective, uh, thanks to digitalization. In some Nordic countries, for instance, there were lots of people that were feeling alone, right? Mm -hmm. And thanks to thanks to different uh, apps on the mobile and thanks to different use cases at the administration, they were able to get connected to each other, to have someone to talk to, to have someone to to um, advise whether there was an emergency. Uh, so this is something that digitalization has bring, and, and let's say it's uh, called let me call it software for good, right? Uh, for the good, for the common good. So, so that's that's very that's very interesting. So, I think that digitalization, as as anything related to innovation, can really do very good things. Sometimes uh, not that very good things. So, we need to do the nice utopias and not the one <laughs> the nightmare dystopias. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, when when we're looking at an expo, of course, we're thinking about okay, collaboration, right? People are sharing best practices, people are sharing stories, people are sharing use cases, sharing, uh, yeah, different experiences. Um, and that's really fundamental. But I guess my, my question for you is, how do you see that 
like your perfect scenario is two people meet at the expo, they form a partnership, they go on to, to implement something, they go on to change a city, right? How do you see that actually working out in practicality? Do you have any um, ideas on how that this collaboration will play a role in urban innovation? Yeah, we've seen plenty of them. Yeah. Uh, for instance, from a, uh, from a city to city perspective collaboration, we have seen plenty of cities that were, uh, that had already applied uh, some initiatives in their cities and having these um, uh, open doors or even closed door discussions, because uh, when, when you do open door discussions, it's, it's easier to share best practice. When you do closed door discussions, it's easier to share, okay, this hasn't worked out very well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, there's plenty of collaboration in this sense, understanding, okay, I tried to do this and, um, and this worked out very well. Why don't you try it on your city? Uh, even discussions like, uh, because at the beginning we were discussing about financial issues, so understanding, okay, how much this would cost me, not only on, on monetary terms, but also on resources from my team, stuff like that. So there are plenty of discussions on that, but also discussions between different companies and different vendors, because I might have a, a wonderful solution on lighting, uh, and another company has a wonderful solution on how to get Wi-Fi to the city. And another company might have as a wonderful solution on how to, um, I don't know, pay the parking space. So if you mix them, all to, them up together, you can have a, a wonderful LED lighting that has that is connected and gives Wi-Fi to the citizen, and that you can also uh, park your your electrical car there and and use the payment systems that there are. So everything is interconnected, and it's difficult to find a company that does all of them. But yeah. these different partnerships uh, can can really work out, and then all together they can go to the city and offer the solution. So we have seen plenty of them uh, throughout uh, throughout this uh, twelve year history. Plenty. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, I have to plug a little bit. Um, we just had a, a session on your Central Agora here at the Expo um, called Urban Shark Tank. It's uh, the second time we've done it as Babel, and it's a really, really fun session. We just had um, three city sharks. So someone representing the city of Barcelona, someone representing a, a county in, in in Dublin County, um, and someone also representing a, a city in Germany. Um, and we had three company pitches, and they pitched to them their use case in five minutes and the city sharks um advised on the replicability of it and asked really really great questions and afterwards they were all um exchanging a lot of different um knowledge and details and i i that was just my personal experience right before we came to this interview on on how this collaboration can also work in in the space of an event so exactly yeah yeah um it's something very cool because um, physical events allow for that. Uh, I remember during COVID times that uh, some people were saying uh, physical events are not going to happen anymore. Everything is digital right now, but um, this doesn't work out. You need, no. to, you need to see yourself face to face and having these exchanges and these conversations because things magically start to appear. That's also the reason why we tend to live in cities and not on the conscious side by ourselves. So, so because we want to, we want to meet uh, other talent. And we yeah. want to grow together and exchange. Uh, if you do this, then very nice things uh, happen. It's the human experience, right? Yeah. You need to see the face. And it, it builds another level of trust if you've seen them in the flesh than on, on a camera, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. This podcast wouldn't be the same if you weren't seeing each other in face-to-face. -face. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We try to do that. We do do some virtual episodes, but I always try to, to meet in person because it just, you form a bond just having sat here for 30 minutes talking yes. to each <laughs> other. So, um, so what do you envision? So envision, I don't know, year 2050, I guess. It's year 2050. Smart City Expo is still going on, I guess. Yes. Um, <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, but what do you envision for the future for smart cities? Can you paint us a little bit of a picture? Well, this is my personal, uh, I don't know whether opinion or at least uh, I hope so. Um, because some, some people envision a Blade Runner city, right? Uh, like with um, flying cars and all this stuff and uh, very... <laughs> very gray city and uh, I don't know, very tall buildings, stuff like that. Uh, uh, I'd like to envision a, a different type of city. There might be flying cars, it is true, uh, but I envision a very green city. Um, mm -hmm. I, uh, and that's the most important thing, perhaps. We understand and we know right now that using that using greener materials, um, we, can, we can fight climate change and that uh, we know that, uh, for instance, the heat right now, it's getting to 
to very difficult levels to live with. Uh, we understand that having a gray city doesn't help on that. So for instance, if the if the temperature in Barcelona is 30 degrees, if you don't have a, a green area, you, you even feel like it is 40 to 45 degrees. Yeah. You, you cannot go outside. But if the city is, is much greener, then you feel like it's 25 degrees. Okay, I can go outside and have a walk. So, so I, I truly believe that uh, we're gonna, the society as a whole, and even in the whole world, really, basically, it's gonna, it's gonna become cleaner. I, I don't know whether we will arrive on time, but, uh, but uh, my perspective is that uh, we will go there. Of course, the, the digitalization will always play a part on this, but um, I understand that um, technology will be seen as something that is behind the surface, uh, that it's part of our current lives, but mm -hmm. that we use it as a means to an end, right? Uh, so, so I, I really, I really think that, that is going to happen, and I also see that, uh, or I imagine that cities won't be, will be less car centric than right now. Uh, yeah. We have plenty of cities that are being designed by for the car, and I see cities being designed for the for the citizen basically. Yeah, absolutely. I had a podcast episode um, yesterday afternoon um, with a city from Spain and a city from Portugal together. Um, and from the city of Braga, he described um, what he wanted for his city in the future is calm and green were two of his adjectives, mm -hmm. um, and which I thought was cool. The other one took the approach of, you know, more digital and innovative. And of course, both of you need all of those yes. um, for, for a city. So um, what is your call to action? <laughs> for our listeners, to the cities, to innovators, to other stakeholders, what's your call to action? Stop talking and start doing. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and, and this is actually the, the, the theme of this year's event. Um, the, the claim of this year's event is welcome to the new urban era. And, and what is behind this is that we really understand and we feel it and we have felt it at the, at the expo this year is that Right now is the time to the time to act and the time to start doing things to to diff, to really apply different solutions to try and maybe you make a mistake but try at least try stop talking and and start doing and um, yeah that is my call to action yeah absolutely then at the end of this main interview part I like to give the open floor to you is there something that you're really passionate about that you didn't yet get the chance to talk about <laughs> this is your floor if you want it really. Mm -hmm. um, I really believe in our future. Yeah. Um, I, I know that there are plenty of challenges out there. So there's this climate emergency, this technological disruption that really can affect plenty of lives. Um, we fear AI, for instance, because it can leave us without jobs. Um, we have these obsolete infrastructures that we have. So, so I, I know there are plenty of challenges. Uh, an aging society as well, which is... But I really believe that the human has the ability, and, and, and we have done always that in the past, to, to overcome these challenges. Uh, the thing is that we need to do things together. And right now it's the best moment in time to do things together. We have, the, we, we have this capacity and this ability to, to share between each other. Social media can be evil, but it can be very helpful as well. Uh, and, and, and we have the opportunity to have these wonderful discussions with our city leaders on this case, but also with our politicians. They are, even if sometimes we see them like at this top level, but, but in reality, they are, it is easier than ever to, to talk to them and to, and to, and to make sure that they understand what they need. If yeah. they want to be reelected, they need to listen to us. So it's, it's as simple as that. Sometimes it's as simple as that. And we as consumers, have a have a huge capacity of changing how the system is is behaving right now. So if I want to be if I really want to be more sustainable, I have to I, I just have to buy things that are sustainable. And if I stop doing, buying, let's say, fast fashion, for instance, right, or, or or cars that are really polluting or stuff like that, then the companies will have to <laughs> will have to change. Yeah. So we have a, a huge power there. So um, so. I really believe that the future is going to become better than ever and that things uh, and that we will have a, a better world than we have right now. Very, very good words. Um, now we move on to, to our segment that we have. And the segment that I chose for you today is called Shout Out. Shout Out. Mention a person, an organization or a city you think deserves more recognition in the field. 
That is difficult. Yeah, I know, um, choosing just one, right? <laughs> that is difficult, yeah. Mm, all right. Uh, um, maybe, I hope it's not unpopular, um, but there is one organization. It's here in Spain. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called, uh, in, in Spanish, Red Española de Ciudades Inteligentes, <laughs> which is the, the Spanish network of intelligent cities. Reci. Reci. Mm -hmm. And uh, I truly believe that they are doing something great uh, that can be can be really used in the rest of the world. So uh, they they started like ten years ago, more or less. More or less when we started Smart City Expo. And right now there is uh, over more or less around 150 Spanish cities connected to this network. And what they do is, uh, it, including the city mayors, is is to is to talk to each other, to exchange, to learn from each other, to really have deep discussions on how they do things. So that's wonderful because you see a, a city like uh, Santander in, in Spain that, that did very nice things uh, already 10 years ago. And uh, they are discussing with other cities like, um, I don't know, maybe smaller cities. And, and they're teaching them how to do things. And, and this is wonderful. And I really believe that this can be replicated at any level in any country in the world. Absolutely. I know there are some initiatives in the rest of the world. I know there are initiatives in Korea, in China, in the United States. Of course, they just launched a very nice think tank uh, in relation to, to technology adoption. Uh, but, uh, but the thing that they have, they started in Spain, even though it's my home country, but, but, but it is true, it's truly groundbreaking, I believe. Yeah. Absolutely. So shout out to Rethi. Right. And, and it's so funny that you picked them. You know why? Because we have been doing a series, a podcast series together with Rethi oh, for the yeah. past. Yeah. And he, he had no idea. Um, so actually, the first day of the expo, we recorded the last series, the last of the four podcast episodes we have with them. And what we've been doing on the podcast is bringing together um, Spanish cities that they, Rethi cities, um, together with international cities of Babel. Um, and so we've been bringing them together together on the podcast and the first podcast I recorded at the the event um this week was with the um, uh, CDOs of um of uh, Madrid and Istanbul and we brought them together on the <laughs> podcast so I know you didn't even know <laughs> no. and you shout you gave them the shout out so it's perfect so um thanks for that so last question I have for you it's a question we ask every single guest and it is to you what is a smart city and that's a very simple to answer. It's a city that gives a better quality of life to its citizens. Very good. And short and concise. I love it. I, I Everyone has different answers. And so I really, yeah, really love it. But I am the one who's right. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Now you've heard it. Now we don't have to ask the question anymore. We have the answer. So um, thank you so much for your time, Uga. Yeah, thank you I, I know that you're... you're schedule is very busy here i'm sure so um i really appreciate it and i look forward to to joining you here in barcelona for many more editions of the expo and congress it's really really a pleasure so thank you thanks for having me here thank you absolutely and to all of our listeners don't forget you can always create a free account on babel-smartcities.eu you can find out more about smart cities projects solutions implementations and more so thank you very much Thank you all for listening. I'll see you at the next stop on the journey to a better urban life.